Buenos dias. Good morning. As we continue to worship together on live stream or YouTube with grateful hearts, today's Feast of Pentecost gives us a great opportunity to reflect individually and as the body of Christ. What does it mean to celebrate the extraordinary experience of the coming of the Holy Spirit. The, the Spirit brings wonder, comfort, newness, hope, joy, and equip the believers to become a radical community of grace. Come, let us worship together. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, on this day, you open the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Shed aboard this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel, that he may reach to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Open our hearts and minds, O God, by the power of your Holy Spirit, so that, as the word is read and proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us this day. Amen. A reading from the book of Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush 
of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at the sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us, in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea, and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood." before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the great and wide sea, with its living things too many to number, creatures both small and great. There move the ships, and there is that Leviathan, which you have made for the sport of it. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand and they are filled with good things. You hide your face, and they are terrified. You take away their breath, and they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. 
Bless the Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the discernment of spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free and we were all made to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of Jesus Christ according to John. On the last day of the festival, the great day, while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, Out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the Spirit which believers in him were to receive. For as yet there was no spirit, because Jesus was not yet glorified. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you join me in a word of prayer? Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Several years ago, when General Conference was held in Dallas, I served as a page there and helped with all kinds of things like the voting and delivering message, that kind of thing. And 
And I remember there was this lengthy discussion around hiring United Methodists to serve as sign language interpreters for those meetings. And the issue came up in an earlier conference when one of the speakers was, was talking about the Book of Discipline, which was normal in those conversations. And, and the person that was signing for them didn't know the sign for discipline, so she signed the Book of Punishment. One time I was preaching at a church in Mexico and had an interpreter that was going from English to Spanish. And, and it was difficult, and I wondered sometimes if he was actually saying the same things that I was saying. I think it pays to know the language of the people to whom you are speaking. And of course, this works in both ways as well. Uh, those who come here from other countries, uh, they have the same difficulty with our language. I remember reading a story about a, a Central American pastor who was touring the United States in an effort to talk about the work that was happening in his churches and, and to get some financial support for missionaries and ministries back in his home country. He was at a, a church lunch and he was telling the guest about his home country and, and some things about his family and the important work that they would help to support there. And as he was finishing his talk, he said, and I have a charming and understanding wife, but no children. And then he paused a moment and he said, you see, my wife is unbearable. Well, there were puzzled glances around the room and that prompted him to try to clarify his answer. And he stumbled and he said, what I meant to say is, is my wife is inconceivable. Well, the room was laughing and then he realized that his, he'd made a mistake and, and he got into even deeper trouble with the English language by trying to correct himself. And he said, well, well what I meant to say is my wife, she is impregnable. You see, it helps to speak the language of the person with whom you are speaking. And that's one of the things that I love about the story of the first Pentecost. You heard the story that was read earlier, and, and I think, what, what an amazing event. And, and I've often wondered whether this was a miracle of speaking or a miracle of hearing. Did these Galileans speak in all these different languages? Or, or did they speak in their own language and those listening by the guidance of the Holy Spirit, well, they were able to hear the words in their own, their own language. Either way, it's an amazing miracle. I mean, on the day of Pentecost, a group of Galileans were testifying and people from at least 15 different countries heard them speak in their own language. I mean, think about that for a minute. Think about how difficult communication is even among those who speak the same language. Communication is, is even um, difficult among people who share the same experiences. I mean, I hear people say all the time, we've lost the ability to communicate. These days we're communicating in all different sorts of ways with lots of screen time or having to learn to speak through a mask and talk with that on. And, and here on the day of Pentecost, we have a group of people across the spectrum of languages and nationalities and experiences, and they're understanding this message of the good news of God. In the Pentecost event, we see that the Christian faith is really a universal faith. People from different nations understood the gospel message. And why is that? Well, it's because the message was meant for all nations and all people. Like all the, like all the people on earth, we, we in this land are somewhat ethnocentric. Ethnocentric is a, a big word that means we think everybody on earth ought to be like us, to look like us talk like us, think like us, and we think that God ought to favor us. After all, we're, we're in a Christian nation, at least in our own minds we are. One of my uh, hymn festival is, is tonight. One of my favorite hymns is number 437, This Is My Song. The first verse goes like this. This is my song, O God of all the nations, a song of peace for lands afar and mine. 
This is my home, the country where my heart is. Here are my hopes, my dreams, my holy shrine. But other hearts in other lands are beating with hopes and dreams as true and high as mine. I, I think we're shocked sometimes when we begin to realize that God is a universal God. I, I know intellectually we understand that it's true, but, but at a more basic level, uh, we want a God who is just like us. I mean, surely God speaks English. Surely God has the same values we do. And then we, we meet a Christian from Africa or Asia or Europe who has very different ideas about God, and, and it bothers us. I mean, we, we thought we had God in this box. And, and I think about the title of the great J.B. Phillips book that says, Your God is Too Small. You see, there are wonderful Christian people in almost every nation on earth. And naturally, they see the world through the lens of their own culture. And they think their way is best as well. I think we probably give God a good laugh sometimes. But the truth is God is a universal God. God is the God of the Laotians and the Congolese, as well as Americans. God has no favorites. But what God favors is justice and righteousness and compassion and love. And where those characteristics are found, that's where God's favor is. And what God is seeking is the day when all the world's people will know God's love and God's peace and will know themselves to be a part of the family of God. The Christian faith is a universal faith. So Pentecost reminds us that God comes to us just as we are. People from, from these many different nations heard the gospel spoken directly to them in their own language. And that's something important to recognize here. Uh, here's a story that I think helps to, to portray that. Uh, it's a story of a youth choir that was out on tour and at, at one of their stops they, they learned that a certain little boy in the audience was deaf. And as the concert went on, uh, the boy was just mildly interested. He was watching the young people sing, but there, there was no message there for him. I mean, how could there be? He, he couldn't hear any of the words. But then suddenly everything changed, and the choir began to sing in this guy's language. You see, they were signing the words with their hands as well as singing with their voices. They were signing and singing that beautiful chorus, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Well, the boy suddenly stood up and his eyes lit up and he was so excited. They, they were singing to him. And his little hands began to sing as he signed along with the choir. And when the choir finished, well, the little boy thought that whole evening had been planned just for him. The thing is, uh, whoever we are, God speaks our language. We don't have to speak English. We don't even have to speak or hear at all because God's language is the language of the heart. God speaks to us where we are. That's not only true of our intellectual differences, but I think it's true of our personalities as well. I don't know if you all have ever noticed this, but, but people are different. Uh, some people are easygoing and they seem to move along through things and nothing ever seems to ruffle them. Some other people are very precise. They want everything done just right. Some people are more social and they're energized by being around a crowd of people and, and, and others like quiet, small groups or to retreat off by themselves. The truth is people are, are different. I mean, to a certain extent, that's the way that God created us. It's, it's a part of our genetic code. I think that's what the scripture from 1 Corinthians tells us today, too. There are a variety of gifts, but the same spirit. Some of us are more emotional. Some of us are more intellectual. 
you know, I'm convinced that God speaks to engineers differently than God speaks to artists. Engineers need all the nuts and bolts of faith, and artists sense a bigger canvas. The point is that, that God comes to us where we are. God speaks our language. God speaks to us according to our own needs. And God uses different means to speak to us according to those needs. In, in worship, some people respond to Scripture. Others respond to the liturgy. Still others to the music and, and maybe even a few to the sermon. People are, are different. Christ came to Paul in a different way than he did to Simon Peter in a different way than to Phoebe. The point is that God comes to us individually as well as corporately. God speaks to us according to our needs. God comes to us where we are. You see, that's, that's really the meaning of the incarnation. We cannot separate Pentecost from the entire Christ event. In Christ, God entered the world to be close to us, to reveal to us God's nature to help us prepare for the coming kingdom. Thy kingdom come. God came to us at Christmas in Jesus Christ and God came to us at Pentecost in the Holy Spirit. God came speaking our language that we might know God and have life more abundantly. So now, now it's our mission to translate the gospel into language that our friends and neighbors can understand as well. I believe there, there are people in our communities who are waiting to hear this good news in a language that they can understand. And here's the challenge. We can't wait for them to learn our language, the language of words like incarnation and transfiguration. Those words mean nothing to those who feel lost and unloved and left out. We need to translate the gospel into words and acts that no one can misunderstand. Words like love, justice, compassion, forgiveness, acceptance. God speaks to us according to our needs, so let us speak to the world according to its needs as well. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now would you join me as we affirm our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, on this Pentecost Sunday, we gather like our mothers and fathers in the faith have done for 2,000 years, celebrating the birthday of the movement we call the Christian Church. From the day you breathed your spirit onto a small gathering of believers, you have enlivened your church and given us the blessing of being your body on earth. We lift up our gratitude for the ways you moved then, giving words to your people to speak the gospel to all, regardless of nation or tongue. We're encouraged by the creativity you have brought into this vision of the kingdom to come, adopting all of us into your household as brothers and sisters, siblings in Christ. We're grateful for the ways your spirit's power has not dimmed over the centuries, revealing new expressions of church in every generation. As present with us now as you were then, we thank you for never leaving us without an advocate and guide. Pour out your spirit in fresh ways on the people of St. Paul's United Methodist Church, our tiny corner of your global church. Please open our hearts to your continued whispers, nudges, pushes, and signs 
that we could join you in the work you are doing in Houston, in Texas, in our country, and in our world. Let us see with your vision for your world, God, because when we use our own sight, we don't see far enough. We confess that we, as your children, fall short of the vision you gave us at the Pentecost. We have allowed differences of language, nation, and appearance to not just separate us, but generate fear, hate, senseless violence, and oppression. We build systems that privilege some and punish others, and we fail to be instruments of your peace. We ask your spirit to move us, our hearts, our institutions, the powers and principalities of this world that are entrenched in the status quo. Allow us to see your vision of the reign of God, a kingdom that celebrates the diversity of your beautiful creation, uniting people in acknowledgement of your glory. You break into the chaos of our lives like mighty rushing wind, like flames of new life. With your light, Holy Spirit, illuminate the shadows in our world. Bring into our awareness the sins and injustices we are ignorant of, whether they are willfully or passively ignored. Show us where you would have us testify to your will, your heart, and your love. Put people in our way who will influence us for good and embolden us to be that influence for others. Guide our leaders here at home and worldwide, and make a way where we do not see a way right now. Fill our hearts with the courage and motivation to pursue your righteousness alone. God, only you can break down the barriers we create for ourselves. Enable us to be the church you desire, loving you with all our hearts, minds, souls, and strength, regardless of what location we stand in. Help us to love our neighbors the way we know we should, not just theoretically, but in real words and deeds. Gracious God, we lift up to you the grieving and the rejoicing alike, and we know that you are in our midst. We seek the peace only you can provide as we hold heavy in our hearts the people who need healing, protection, justice, and restoration. We ask that you would continue to fill us with love for all your creation as we join our siblings around the world this morning, praying together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Would you now take this time to greet those around you with signs of peace? And take a moment to reach out to those who are separated uh, from you by distance right now with the peace of Christ as we continue our worship in community together. I want to welcome you again to St. Paul's United Methodist Church. We're so glad that you're worshiping with us today. I hope you'll be sure and register your attendance on the app or our website. If it's your first time to worship with us, be sure and give us your contact information so we can get in touch with you and tell you all that's going on here at St. Paul's. Most of our weekly updates go out through our email list, so if you've not subscribed to the chimes, you may not have received things like our Friday pastor's message. You can sign up for our weekly e-newsletter by going to our website, www.stpaulshouston.org, and click on the button that says Stay Connected. I hope you'll be part of our virtual hymn festival with your favorite hymns, that you'll join us as we sing some of those favorite songs uh, Sunday at 4 o'clock p.m. It's an online experience. In addition to singing, our music staff will share the history of each of the hymns, their authors, and their composers. Again, it'll be online, and you can go to our website, stpaulshouston.org, and click on live stream, and it'll take you there.
I wanted to update you too on a couple of volunteer opportunities. Uh, first, a word from our Emergency Aid Coalition, the EAC. I want to thank all of you for your giving to the EAC and keeping that organization going. I spoke to Jean over there and she applauds the St. Paul's folks as the super givers to the EAC. Right now they need volunteers each day to put together lunches and snack bags. They have a clothing center that's been closed due to COVID-19 and they're looking for some volunteers to help sort those donations and organize it so they'll be ready when they're reopening. All the clothing and those items to be sorted were collected before COVID-19 occurred so they're safe for folks to handle. You can contact Amy Taylor through our website and she can get you some more information about that and how to get signed up. A word too about the Search Homeless Services. It's an incredible organization that works to provide housing and care for those within our city that are experiencing homelessness. They're looking for some volunteer assistance with some unloading and dividing and distributing food to clients at several housing sites. And all that will be done following these uh, distancing principles that we keep and wearing masks. And they currently have eight volunteer shifts a week where they distribute pre prepared food at our Tenemos sites on Wednesdays and Fridays. Again, you can contact Amy Taylor or you can go to our website and get some more information about that as well. Thanks again for being in worship with us today. As the offertory plays, I hope you'll be mindful about the ways that God is calling you and moving you by the Spirit to, to be the people that we're called to be. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for the ways in which you're blessing our lives, even in these, uh, these difficult days. We pray, oh God, that uh, as we give a portion back to you, that you would use it to build your kingdom here on earth to be the place that you've wanted it to be. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Now would you receive this benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.